everyone and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today we're looking at the Colouring Heaven collection which has just been released. It's called Botanics and it features 48 beautiful botanical bird and butterfly designs by Roberts Illustrations. So the Colouring Heaven magazine comes out every month as you know and it's also a part of a subscription service that you can buy into and have it delivered to your house every month. This is not part of that subscription, so this particular one is what Colouring Heaven call a collection rather than a, a special edition. And the collection has to be bought separately, so this will not be coming on your Colouring Heaven subscription if you have it already, just to make that clear. You will need to buy it separately, either from your local UK newsagent or online. All the links will be in the description for you anyway. So the Colouring Heaven collection is a little bit different because only a few of them come out per year and they all have one specific theme. I think we've had dogs, we've had cats, uh, rabbits as well. This one's obviously botanics. And the difference is that they contain more illustrations. So usually I think you get 40. I should know this by now. I do it every month. Uh, you get 40 illustrations in a Colouring Heaven edition. This one has 48, so it's a bit bigger. It's a bit of a, a little bumper book that is uh, just solely focused on one particular theme. So this is the front cover, as you can see. We've got a lovely bird, looks a little bit like a sparrow and some bramble in the background. On the back, we have another bird, not sure what that is. We've got a little um, snail and some more foliage and things. So that's, that gives you an idea of the kind of thing that you're gonna be getting in the book. So just like all of the different Colouring Heaven specials, you can see we've got a colour combination chart and we've got a bit of an introduction about the illustrator. So I've never actually heard of Robert before, but it says he was born and raised in the Netherlands and has been drawing his whole life. During art school in the Netherlands, he tried many mediums, but nothing really worked for him. So he decided to stick with what was most comfortable, which is just black pen on paper. In 2009, he decided to leave the Netherlands and move to a beautiful British Columbia in Canada. Nature is his biggest inspiration, from the majestic mountains in British Columbia to a small little flower that grows on the side of the road. Oh, how lovely is that? And then you've got a bit of, um, you've got his links, sorry, to, to see his shops there. So we've got his Etsy shop, Robert's Illustrations, and his Instagram as well. So if you want to go and follow him, see what else he's, uh, he's up to. And then... Here we go with the first illustration, the first of 48. So the great thing about this book, if I just turn the page I can show you, is that on the flip side of every page, you'll, you've got a bit about the flower or the plant or the animal that's featured on the illustration. So that very first one there, that is actually called the cosmos flower. And apparently they're herbaceous perennial plants or annual plants. The leaves are simple. Uh, I don't know what pinnate or bipinnate means, but you can look it up, uh, and they're arranged in opposite pairs. The flowers are produced in a capitulum with a ring of broad ray florets and a centre of disc florets. The flower colour is very variable between the different species. So there's a lot of language there that I'm not really familiar with. Obviously, I'm not an expert in botanical things, but um, again, I really like it because it's not just giving you the name of the flower and letting you guess. It's giving you a little bit more information, a little bit more for you to maybe research, um, go and Google the cosmos flower, um, and see what they look like you can use as a reference for your coloring if you wanted to do that and it's just nice I guess to learn a little bit more as you color in it's always nice to have a bit more information isn't it so this one here is the orange fronted yellow finch that's the bird and the dog rose and forget-me-nots so the forget-me-nots I think are these little flowers in the background and these will be the dog roses here then we've got marigolds. So when I think of marigolds, I always think of the gloves that you use to do the washing up. <laughs> but obviously marigolds are flowers, I do know that. And again, it just gives you a bit of info. Short-lived aromatic herbaceous perennials with sparsely branched lax or erect stems. Leaves are long and hairy on both sides and with margins entire or occasionally waved or weakly toothed. Ooh, <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it, to say all this? Uh, this one looks to be a, a landscape orientated one, but I'm not going to turn it because you can see the, the flowers anyway. This is daisies and clovers. Then we have a uh, penstemon or penstemon. Uh, it's the largest genus of flowering plants endemic to North America. Mm. They look a little bit like bluebells, don't they? Like long bluebells. Then we've got the Canadian warbler and blue and yellow wildflowers. Of course, you don't have to colour them blue and yellow. It's totally up to you, but you might want to do it, you know, as close to the original 
colours as you can, make it look more realistic. This is Lily of the Valley, which I believe have white flowers. Um, so I think it'd be really interesting for me to maybe do a tutorial of how to colour this, um, how to get a, a flower looking white without just leaving it white. So maybe some shading, some grey on there, maybe even some light blue or something or some light pink. But yeah, that would be a nice tutorial. So again, we've got the dog rose, then we've got the blueberries and raspberries. So little bits of wild berries coming into it now. It's saying that the uh, the dog rose, I think it's the dog rose, is a deciduous shrub. A shrub so that uh, means that it loses its leaves, doesn't it? Ranging in height from one to five metres, though sometimes it can scramble even higher into the crowns of taller trees. Hmm. I think we've all been blackberry picking at, at one stage, haven't we? American goldfinch, wildflowers and grass. So that's self-explanatory. I think that's the one on the back cover, isn't it? Then we've got hydrangea, lily of the valley, the kaya lily and the orchid. Some beautiful flowers there. Particularly love hydrangeas. I love the soft pastel blue and pink that they come in. So here we have obviously a rose. You can always tell the rose by the leaves, I think. They have those kind of uh, jagged edged leaves. Uh, yep, yeah, so that's the rose. Then we've got the poinsettia, which is known as the Christmas flower, I guess. Usually see it on your um, Christmas table. This is ferns, grape, hyacinth, blackberry and daffodil. So obviously these must be the ferns in the background here. Then you've got the, the hyacinth, blackberry and daffodil. So these are the daffodils, aren't they? Uh, blackberries. So this here must be the hyacinth. Didn't know what hyacinth looked like before today. Then we've got pine, corn, pine corns, <laughs> pine cones and acorns which are really, really nice autumnal leaves, aren't they? I love the shape of these, these oak leaves. We've got the eastern bluebird and then just some different foliage around there. So it's telling you a bit about the bluebird as well and the animals, not just the, the botanics in it. So apparently the, blue, the eastern bluebird is a small thrush found in open woodlands, farmlands and orchards. It's the state bird of Missouri and New York. That's really interesting, That's something I didn't know. I love, like I've said earlier, I love to learn things while, while I get, um, you know, into this hobby as well. It's just little things that you pick up just from these little captions that you probably remember in the future. Uh, we've got rose hip, elderberry and rose buds. So these will be the elderberries, won't they? The little tiny berries. And then these here must be the rose hips, I should think. This one again, I'll just turn this one so you can see. Uh, it's ferns, blusher mushrooms, gallerina mushrooms and moss. Really, really pretty that one. Then we've got apple blossom, another gorgeous one. Really sweet little petals on there. This is the chickadee and magnolia tree. <laughs> so it rhymes. The chickadees are a group of Northern American birds in the tit family included in the genus Poposiel or Posiele. Well, I don't know how you say that. Species found in North America are referred to as chickadees, while other species in the genus are called tits. They are small sized birds overall, usually having the crown of the head and throat patch distinctly darker than the body. And then it just tells you a bit more about the size and things like that. So I call my kids my chickadees. And I guess that's where it's come from. Uh, sunflowers, chrysanthemums and daisies. Another beautiful page. These are larger flowers for you to maybe practice your uh, bigger blends. We've got uh, Daha, unless that's meant to be Dahlia, but I can't see any Dahlias on here. So it must be da, da or da, chrysanthemum and daisies. Then we've got tulips and grape hyacinth. So again with the hyacinth and the tulips are beautiful flowers as well, aren't they? You can pretty much colour a tulip in any shade you want, can't you? This is carnation. They're quite um, traditional flowers, aren't they? I think men used to use carnations in their buttonholes, didn't they? When they used to wear suits and look really super smart. Uh, not like the, the men's fashion nowadays, that's for sure. Uh, swallow, cornflower and daisies. This is quite an intricate one. Lots of detail, lots of things going on there. Then we've got chrysanthemums, often called mums or chrysanths. And apparently most of the species originate from East Asia and the centre of diversity is in China. Didn't know that. This is the Lily Stargazer or Stargazer Lily. Uh, I did do a tutorial for, for colouring lilies. If you wanted to use that on this page, just have a look through my playlist for tutorials. You'll find it on there. This is called the Columbine. 
and it's a, a genus of about 60 to 70 species of perennial plants that are found in meadows, woodlands and at higher altitudes throughout the northern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. They're very beautiful flowers, aren't they? It's not, um, it's not a flower I've heard of before. This is the tree sparrow, chrysanthemum and wildflowers. Then we have the peonies, which I believe somebody asked me for a tutorial for, so I'm probably going to do one with this page. You know what I'm like, I have all these ideas and then I either forget or I just don't have time, but I will I will try. You'll have to keep reminding me, keep nudging me. Uh, this is one that I've begun, as you can see. I started doing this the other day with polychromos pencils. So we've got the bleeding hearts flowers and the hummingbird. Now, I'm not really super impressed with how I've coloured the hummingbird. I did have to add in some of the um, the feathery texture here because there wasn't really anything there to, to work with. So I don't really think I've done it right. But um, I like the colours anyway. I like the green, the blue and the purple merging together. And I think the bleeding hearts have turned out really well. All I do when I'm looking to colour um, a flower is I'll just look at references on Google and um, just try my best to replicate them really and the thing with the bleeding hearts is that they have this really really deep pink heart shape um, sort of frame around them just on the inside of the line and then left in the middle is a really really light pink area so it's just changing your pressures really um, and doing that so it's, it's not difficult I can always again do a tutorial of that if you wish then we've got hollyhocks, so this is a genus of about 60 species of flowering plants in the mallow family, Malvacae, commonly known as hollyhocks. So there you go. Peonies and black-eyed Susan, so again with the peony. We've got little wren and morning glory, it tells you a bit about wrens here. They're small and rather inconspicuous except for their loud and often complex songs. I think if I remember rightly, wrens are the smallest birds in the UK, I think. So this is kind of a very, very much a different style. It's a lot lighter in a line work and um, it's it's a lot of flowers sort of bunched together. So this would be a nice little project. It's called a lantana. Um, apparently they're native to the tropical regions of America and Africa, but exist as an introduced species in numerous areas, especially in the Australian Pacific region and India. So that's interesting, isn't it? And of course, we've got a butterfly there as well. Then we've got the iris. The iris is a genus of 260 to 300 species of flowering plants with showy flowers. It takes its name from the Greek word for rainbow. So that's, that's some, again, something I didn't know. Iris is rainbow. Uh, daffodils, I love daffodils. They are just that symbol of spring, aren't they? And symbol of winter being over, which is always good in my book. And I love to see daffodils. They're probably one of my favorite flowers. This is the blue jay and the giant reed. I caught a glimpse of a blue jay once, um, or it might have just been a regular jay. I don't know. Are they all called blue jays or just jays? I don't know. But I caught a glimpse of one. I got a photograph of it just nestled behind some branches, but it wasn't very clear. But I really, um, I really love the colours of jays, and they're massive. I didn't realise how big they were until I got my camera out uh, one day as I was walking through some forest and I saw one really really big um this is daffodils daisies and red berries in this u-shaped configuration then we've got strawberry raspberry and red currant this would really nice bright juicy very shiny fruits to color that'll be lots of fun we've got the clematis cyboldi or cyboldi who knows how you pronounce it but apparently it's the sister plant the florida planer um it has a huge flowering period june uh, june to october at least five months of flower every year so that is a really good flower to plant if you want something that's gonna be really long-lasting I guess then we've got lilac clematis rosemore crocus and forget-me-nots again here we've got acorns and blackberries this time again with the um, the oak leaves we've got gladioli a genus of perennial cormus flowering plants whatever that means in the iris family it's sometimes called the sword lily but usually called by its generic name mm. this is the red-bellied woodpecker and an apple tree again fantastic for practicing your shiny apples and that kind of texture as well as the tree bark be interesting to do this is the aster the aster amylus reaches on average a height of 20 to 50 centimeters the stem is erect and branched, the leaves are dark green, the basal leaves are obovate and petiolated. 
wow, these <laughs> these words are just, I've never heard them, but I'm adding to my vocabulary. I have to find out what they mean. Um, they flower from July through to October and the seeds ripen in October. I wish I knew more about flowers. It's quite it's quite an interesting thing to uh, to learn about, isn't it? Cornflower and black-eyed Susan. Then we have petunias, very, very common, well-loved flower. Apparently, it's a popular flower of the same name, derived its epithet from the French, which took the word petun, meaning tobacco. Not sure they've got anything to do with tobacco, but there we go. And then uh, finally, this is cardinal flowers. And I think these are, these are hummingbirds as well, aren't they? Uh, it says that the cardinal flower is a species of flowering plant in the bellflower family native to the Americas. So yeah, lovely one to end on there with the little birds. So there we have it. That is the Botanics issue, the collection that you will have to buy separately. As I say, all the links in the description that you'll need. So this on the back is advertising the Colouring Heaven Discovery Club, which I need to do a video on. That's going to be one of my uh, next videos. Now, the Discovery Club is £3.98 a month. It has nothing to do with your subscription of Colouring Heaven. If you have one, it's nothing to do with that at all. It's all based online. You pay £3.98 a month and every single week, I believe on a Friday, you'll get an email with a brand new uh, illustration to print off and colour, as well as an interview with the artist and some other bits and bobs as well. So it's just introducing you to someone new each week, giving you a new page to colour. It's really good. So that's that. So as I've said, links in the description where you can get your copy of this if you wish. Uh, any questions, just ask. As always, um, the paper is exactly the same. You can see that it's taken my polychromos really well, or you could if I could find the page. So yeah, it's really nice paper. It's not thin, but it's not you know very thick either, but it has just the right tooth for coloured pencil. So, and also obviously with it being one-sided, you can use markers and things. So there we have it. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.